Hey guys, Rentsport is now finally available for everyone in the open beta via the Epic launcher. So we have to take a look. Let's start with the menu. Just want to give you a very quick overview here, not go into too many details. The style overall seems to be just text and tiles that keep all the content for you. There doesn't seem to be any specific styling or sorting of, of the different elements. Um, not too much graphics involved there a very functional focus so to say and you'll also see that when we go to the options where you have a lot of them i have to say so audio wise you can separate the different different audio levels to your liking usually for sim races that means dialing up the tire volume because that's where a lot of information is coming from though the game even if you crank this up to 200 you probably won't hear much because the tires mainly stay pretty silent we'll see later once we do the driving in the video department there's quite a few settings they have three sub menus here uh, you can't quite see because i have this overlay there but there's rendering and something else um and it's not some of these options aren't quite clear seems to be very deaf focused still because i have no idea what the round robin occlusion queries are and i doubt so do you or, or i doubt you do <laughs> um so they are disabled and i don't know what happens when i enable them um good that you have them i guess once you know what you're doing so a tool tip would be nice in this regard i don't know what separates these six seven settings here and why they need their own menu in terms of rendering why they aren't under video where other settings are but probably not relevant at all here you can just define most of the important stuff and everything is there like you're used to in other unreal games um pretty much like like acc really um i can now run after restarting the pc yesterday everything ran smoothly again so i'm running full epic uh with nvidia on quality and i easily get way over 100 fps like that so we are really not concerned in the performance department though i have a 4090 with a 7800 x3d amd cpu so this is also pretty much pretty close to the best you can actually have gameplay wise again a lot of options not going to go into detail there's many things you can adjust to your liking which i guess is good but it also forces people to spend a lot of time in the menu initially to put the game in a place where they want to have it but i guess this is also just normal with every game when there's so many options like in like we have in simulation games just think of iRacing's amount of menus and config files you can adjust things so i i guess it just comes with a genre here and it's not specific to to rentsport then we go to the controls and this is why i think uh, needs to be speaking about a little again they give you a lot of options to adjust things and it seems to be still kind of coming from the dev environment where they just want to be able to handle everything in order to make it work uh, whatever hardware you have and i feel there should be a way later for them to narrow this down a bit to less dials and still make it work because right now I feel that's, that's a bit much. There's the, the scale you can have on the throttle pedal and then you can have an offset and well, dead zones we know, but there's only dead zone on one end, not on two ends. So it's a bit weird and we can adjust the sensitivity and just finding out what all these settings do will take a bit of time. So if I just put the throttle here to 50%, I'm trying to be stable there. If I increase the sensitivity, you can see that dial is defining what yeah how high my input is so it's kind of changing the progressiveness of the pedal there the dead zone is yeah just going to take something from the top of the pedal there but weirdly enough i'm on 50 percent and it just moves everything down but i can reach 100 percent still so and the pedal is fully pressed and the same way the pedal is fully pressed here at zero so this also changes the progressiveness which is a bit weird then we have the scale so we can be on 100 percent with the pedal half press so it makes it much more sensitive or no zero scale then we don't have a throttle pedal left at all but i think my standard value here was on one pedal fully pressed and we're reaching 100 percent easily so that is fine then we can have an offset which again just yeah kind of changes the pedal is fully pressed changes this value so it feels 
too much really but i remember the times when i was competing in esl why we needed that because everything kind of wasn't um recognized correctly so you needed to fiddle with these settings in order to make your specific set of pedals and steering wheel work same thing for the for the steering wheel here here we have the option for a left and right dead zone uh which which makes more sense but then again who would have a wheel that is different from left to right but whatever we have the option now then there's the offset i don't really yeah it does something and i'm not entirely sure what the steering wheel is straight now at an offset of minus 0.5 i have no clue we we just we just stick with that okay um you can use the calibration here but it's just taking the values i have in di view for the housing belt ultimate pedals and uh, so i can't really actually i can't really actually calibrate with that i'm just it's just taking the values that i have in, in di view but again it's all working it's just a bit different than than what we used to perhaps for well, feedback wise we do not have a lot of dials which is a bit weird because everything else they go insane uh, everywhere else they go insane with settings and here you don't have any somewhat um let's stick to 400 hertz in the first feedback for now let's see if we can feel anything there's a filter i want to keep that low just to feel what the game has to offer strength on 50 my base is set to 80 percent which is roughly 16 newton meters uh we are not inverting it sensitivity stays normal um, then we'll see what we can figure out. Probably there's going to be config files where you can adjust things further, but I haven't actually checked. Just um, my line of thinking that there will be more options one way or another. They're just not available in the menu. Bindings. Uh, you can see there's there's a lot here. And now there's a sub menu with several things you use, so you can bind a lot of buttons. Um, I'll not get into the details here now because there seems to be a lot of functionality, which is generally good for different use cases. You want to bind different buttons. I get that. Um, and we can probably just assume that you can do most of the stuff you'll, you'll ever need in terms of I don't know, replay, flying around, getting the cameras and camera adjustments sooner or later once. This is really working. I think so far the replay mode and the photo mode are not too advanced. So this will be something for a later time. But for now, all we need is something for the car. Um, and that's about what we have in the menu here. So let's go for playing. There is the online contest. There is a, which is not too bad actually to have a calendar here. So you can do or go to the time or day where you want to be a couple filters here that I didn't really check i just want to see all the races that are happening you can see some are running and who would have thought the only serious people flock to again are the gt3s ah that's going to be just dis uh disheartening at the end of the day <laughs> anyway let's move on uh, we might join one later um but for now we want to just do a single player session and assess the cars a bit Again, we have the tiles here for selecting stuff. There's settings for the sessions we can do, uh, the track, the car, penalties and assists not going to be relevant in a single player. Um, no AI is involved here. Could we even? We could not, I guess. We can adjust the BOP right from the menu, which is nice. Um, we'll see how that works once, once everything goes online and if there's actually going to be a competitive scene outside of ESL. Let's stick to Road Atlanta now. Let's stick to the BMW M4 GT3. And the first thing you'll notice is that loading times, like we know from ACC and Unreal, are pretty low. So we are on the track quite fast and uh, we'll not wait any longer i think i'm just going to check the audio levels here that you can still hear me over the engine but this should be fine you can see we are now running safely 110 120 fps on all epic settings pretty much the highest you can have the lss is on quality so not much um we are missing here we can easily squeeze out more fps should i need them quickly back to the menu now to the gameplay then to the display because this is actually quite good in iRacing you just have the shortcut with Control j or k or something and then you can adjust all the ui elements there are a few more here that you can't see because they're outside of the screen so you could have also the uh the standings there's going to be a delta lap time uh let's put this on a pillar here maybe so you can see a little more we have the, the delta stuff 
and here's a couple more lap times so we we have a lot of information that we can put on the screen here's more positioning for example uh, there is a track map as well but you see it's getting cluttered here so we'll, we're leaving that outside of your view um and the only thing can you change the size of things i don't actually no change mode what is change mode oh it's on and off and t is priority so i'm not exactly sure what that does um i was hoping you could make it smaller or bigger but well, that doesn't seem to be the case trying with shift and control so for now this is the size these things have um maybe in the future they add an option to make the smaller but good to have the flexibility here to move ui elements individually but now to the driving part which is probably what most of you are asking so let's go forward i know the brake bias usually is set very low here uh, they're mostly going minimum i think which is very low uh, okay, I think we can go 35%. I think that seems too low. If we turn down the ABS, let's see if we just spin. Yep, that's a handbrake. So the ABS can be, uh, sorry, the brake bias can be set a little too low. I guess we're just going to stick with something, I don't know, which is reasonable, maybe 52%. I know they are running quite high ABS in ESL, so we're going to do this as well. Um, TC wise, we're just going to leave it there for now because what, as long as you leave the TC on, things seem fine. But you can also tell the TC is basically working the entire time. I just turned the steering wheel a tiny bit. TC already engages. Um, not sure, okay, if, if, that is, if that is the way to go. Got a little much too much rotation there. I also have cloud shadows on, so you might be able to see the track getting brighter and darker at times, which is nice. But now we want to get into the driving. And in the GT3, I think everything is rather correct. I have to say the force feedback did improve from when I last drove the game back in ESL there. Everything was even more vague, less connected, not really resistance in the steering wheel. There's a bit more now, okay? The steering wheel definitely tries to prevent me from steering, but it also seems like <clears throat> the steering forces don't really <clears throat> grow or become smaller depending on the grip you have so it's a pretty constant force i have to say only interrupted by bumps on the track which you can see there as long again as the tc is on and of course we get the oversteer and the first feedback i don't think there's anything and it it talks to you like the general feeling for what the car is doing underneath you how much it's rotating or especially if it's over rotating that information is there in the force feedback but everything that is not oversteer or in the realm of understeer or a four wheel drift or whatever the steering wheel isn't isn't your means of accessing what or assessing what the car is doing your means of doing that is via how the um yeah, how the horizon moves around you. The visual, visual part here is going to be much more important for understanding what the car does. You can get some from the audio because once the rear tires start spinning up, you get a lot of feedback through the RPMs of the car. Um, but for that, we also need to turn off the TC. So now let me just pick up the speed a little bit as much as I'm capable currently in that game because I... <coughs> Surely forgot a bit how that worked. But let's keep the TC on and do a somewhat fast lap. And see how it is. The bumps are pretty rough here. I don't know how fast you can take this turn. Okay. And you see, I was pushing over the front tire there. And you can see this in the tire widget pretty much. This is your reference, how you understand which tire you're pushing. If you push over the front, you're gonna see that tire glow up there right so i'm just overdoing it there a little and that's how you get an understanding which axle of the car you're actually utilizing the most in this very moment because even when i crank the wheel fully i'll do it here in a high gear low rpm you can't really hear the tires there's just nothing right takes quite some time for any noise to come up and by that it's probably too late you're too deep into the slip of the tire you're heating it up you're wearing it so the audio clues from the tire are yeah 
not really there yet. Which leaves you a little in the dark as well. So it's pretty much the same issue here that I, I recently complained about uh, over at Le Mans Ultimate. There's a bit more audio feedback, it seems, for locking up a tire. So there seems to be different sounds for longitudinal and lateral slip. So if you slip the tire uh, longitudinally, right, there's a bit more sound if you brake aggressively than if you just crank the wheel one side to the other. One thing you might already be able to see, you barely see the steering wheel here in uh, on the monitor or on at the bottom of the screen like very little movement on the steering wheel is needed to get the car around the corner we can we can live with 10 20 degrees here easily which means the center of the steering is very responsive and the car changes directly quite agile so it's very connected somewhat to the front axle in the initial increase of steering but after the initial 10, 20 degrees or something, everything becomes more vague and the response of the car pretty much is gone, which means the entire grip of the front tires seems to be available in this tiny amount of steering here, which is very, again, it's very responsive. So you can work with that. The force feedback is strong enough to work with this little range, but there is a lot of vagueness afterwards. And if you if you turn 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees, there isn't really a response from the game whatsoever. No extra rotation, no sound. And um, the only thing you'll get from the widget there is the change of tire surface temperature, which is what we're seeing here, right? It just flashes right, uh, right, sorry, bright red. Once we, once we crank the steering there a little. What we can also see is that even though the car is it's a race car and, and we don't have a garage with setups yet so it's all stock setups what you can see is when we push the car a little through the corner here we always have the outside of the tire heating up the most indicating they're not running a whole lot of camber um, or even positive camber but we can't really see that or the other option is that the tire for whatever reason moves so much on the rim and the camber is so dynamic that we end up on the outside of the tire but i think this is rather well weird perhaps okay let's go into more of how the car behaves the way you feel the car and if you've played Le Mans ultimate it's very likely it will feel similar to you when you've driven the gtes not so much the lmdh but the gtes drive very similar that in a way that they always have more rotation to give and the game in general and the cars they are more rear limited than they are front limited so every time you over push the car you're gonna get the rear around and rotate it into the corner and no matter if that is on entry or on exit or mid turn you'll always have the rear end of the car being the limit at least here on the rear wheel driven car and you can in every situation you can get the rear to, to, to swim around you and that is really i think one of the terms you can use some will say it's it's floaty um but this is being used for a lot of games these days so i'm, I'm not sure we should stick to the word floaty because it might not actually tell you um what what i'm what i'm feeling here i think shopping trolley is maybe the better thing where you have the impression that the rear tires have a lot of negative tone i'm not talking minus 0.4 of a degree i'm more talking minus 10 or 20 degree that's that's how the rear steps out so easy on me at, at very high speeds and i don't have to do much for this for the rear to be very very willing to go right into death mode and that's the same thing you turn into the corner and then the rear just kind of auto rotates around you as if you had a shopping trolley with these loose wheels shaking around and always allowing you to yeah spin on the spot essentially um and there's always this bit of a kind of delay thing we'll see it's different on the front wheel driven cars but every time i crank the wheel you get a response from the front end and then the rear end kind of follows but always in a delayed way it will somehow step out and then keep stepping out once you go neutral again in the steering wheel so the kind of inertia 
the rear has. See, I didn't do anything there. It just floats around me and I wasn't going fast for this particular corner. I didn't do any weird inputs. I just turned the wheel a little bit and already the rear is willing to die there. So it is um, loose to say the least and that is with TC on a high level. So it's protecting me a lot here when I just slam the throttle. And let's see what happens when we go down on the TC. Let's try one, how much that intervention is. And you can see it's still flashing the entire time. Maybe just giving me more power, but it's still... Well, okay. It's giving me enough power. Let's see if we have grip now. TC off. No. Nope. Okay, so the tires don't like temperature, which gives me a lot of uh, eye racing vibes. Yep, still no tire. I don't know about you, but have you seen any real race car doing a burnout? Then trying to drive straight and just spinning? I haven't. So that seems weird. The temperature sensitivity of the tires seem to be exaggerated, perhaps. Let's see if they come down again, though. Seems like it. Once we pick up speed, the wind seems to be enough. Let's hope we survive this corner. Pressures only went up marginally, though. Given how much temperature it seemed like we had, but anyway. Maybe it didn't sink in. In the previous versions, the behavior that I'm trying to describe here with the shopping trolley and the rear always kind of chasing the front end and sliding behind it in a bit of a delayed fashion, that was always there from, from day one, really. I don't have to, I'm not steering at all. I just kind of look into the corner, tap the brake and, and the car auto rotates. Um, that was always there. But what they did now, and that wasn't there before, is that the temperature on the rear tires goes up much faster when you go too far into the slide. In previous versions of the game in ESL, the tire sensitivity wasn't as harsh, or the, the temperature sensitivity of the tires wasn't as harsh. A, it wasn't producing that much temperature, and B, the temperature was not that much of a problem. And that seems to have changed maybe in an attempt to get around people going into this excessive slip but they haven't sorted kind of this excessive slip they sorted it in a way in a kind of second level where they are now giving the tire excessive temperature and making the tire very temperature sensitive which forces you to stay away from that slidey driving but essentially it's still there, just that it's not viable anymore. And I think this is something else than fixing the behavior in the first place. So either they think this is correct behavior, which fair game, okay. I'm not a game developer. I didn't access real life cars. Uh, I haven't spoken to many engineers, so perhaps there is some truth to it. Or they can't fix it, which would be worse. But you see this, right? This is feels like a very slidey endeavor here. And the other thing is I can always just slam the brakes completely. No feedback whatsoever from the ABS. It's probably doing its thing. Um, but it's not telling me a lot. And that was always also there from the beginning. With that in mind, I think we should switch cars. Instead of the GT3, we're going to go to uh, TCR. And uh, we're going to just take the Hyundai, load the same track, not needed to do anything there because there's a specific thing I want to show you. Thankfully, we have same still slow loading times, which is great. And we can drive off right away. Maybe one thing, now that I just see it, seating position adjustment is a bit limited i feel we have the field of view okay we have the distance so we want to sit a little more in the car to, for you to see something of it and uh, we can go left right and we can go up and down but uh, and i think there's some there's a way to kind of make the make the dashboard uh, on show on top right 
but uh, for example we don't really have a, a slider for for the pitch of the camera for example so i feel we're, we're a bit limited with what we can do in terms of camera here would be nicer to have better onboard camera options to kind of still see the steering wheel still see the dashboard still be in the car um, but this way you're almost forced to drive with a HUD dash on top instead of using the original in the car. So now this is going to be interesting. You're going to see this right away. There is pretty little response in the front wheel driven cars to the steering input. So they are suddenly not as responsive anymore as the GT3 was. Right, I can do much bigger movements here in the steering wheel. The car is hardly responding at all. Whereas on the GT3, very little was enough to get the car into the corner already. So this is insanely sluggish feeling here. And the other thing is, not that it's just unresponsive and not sensitive in the first place. It also feels delayed. And let me show you what I mean. I'm just going, so just left right here. Nothing pretty much happening. And But if I keep it into one direction, it feels like almost there's three or five tenths or so in between my steering input and the, the tire actually gripping up and changing direction. And that is... Yeah, I was not going faster, but I guess uh, sand is pretty slippery, so we'll, we'll ignore that. But that curb is harsh on the steering, especially when you're going slow. Hello, fire truck. Hello, tow truck. Okay, that was bouncy. So we have that in for feedback, you can tell. But we don't have anything from the road in the first feedback. And this is just... This feels even more like we're swimming here on the road. And I don't know, I'm... That is, I think, how a... Uh, well, one car I've driven is a, some, something 19, early 1990s Saab 900 or something. That drives like that on the highway. But I'm not sure a race car should behave like that, where it's just so, so sluggish, delayed, with the tendency of the rear end to float around you. So again, we have that word. But it seems very, seems very weird. It doesn't feel like you have a, a strong connection between the tire and the tarmac. It doesn't feel like rubber gripping up on on concrete it, it feels more like i don't know going weird weird metaphor but maybe trying to drive a spoon through a half warm cheese or something maybe maybe that's something we're gonna keep from now on a spoon through half warm cheese I, if you have something better write it in the comments i'll gladly pick it up so that was the thing I wanted to show you with the TCRs. They rotate as well. If you go off throttle, you're going to coast into oversteer sooner or later. But again, everything comes at a delay. And it's not very crisp, not very responsive. Doesn't give you a lot of feedback from the game here. <coughs> Sound, I think, is, is okay. Nothing overwhelming. Um, but for me, the main thing is how the car goes around here. And I know some other games have this similarly it was earlier versions of automobilista 2 had this some cars in r factor 2 have that uh, in the more ultimate you have that in the gtes and here this kind of shows as well a little um let's move on to the lmdh and we can just keep recording without a cut here because it goes so quickly so this is really nice i'm um, just going for the lmdh gdp of course for the bmw and we drive it on the same track because this car is very different now. Of course, it has a lot more downforce and all. Okay, my, my phone is going crazy, but I think we're just going to ignore that, really. Oh, we're going to get the engine at some point here. Okay, second gear does not have any thing from the electric engine. What's happening? There's the ICE. 
And I think this this sounds well, especially from the lower RPM. This sounds good. And the higher RPMs, not so much. And I have to say, this is the car is much sharper. The car has better response again to the steering. The initial bit now again is very sharp and direct. So you have more, it immediately feels more precise because it really goes where you're putting the steering wheel. So it seems like they're, this might be a bit loud. So let me, let me quickly turn this down a little just so I don't start screaming. Yes, we want to save. Can we please keep driving? Thank you. Well, it's still loud. So I turned it down here. Um, so it's much sharper, better connection, makes it more easy for you to be precise. You can still tell. You give it an impulse and the rear kind of keeps moving for a tiny period longer than, than your steering input really is. Which is just kind of how this game is at the end of the day, right? Grip does not have a definitive point. Grip has a spectrum, a very wide one. Um, oh yeah, it's bumpy. So you'll never feel as much in contact with the road. Everything is kind of negotiable. Everything is a bit vague and you can have the same corner speed at different yaw angles of the car with different steering angles. But it doesn't tell you like directly, this is the way you need to drive this. It's, it always feels like there's a bit of room to do whatever with the car, but it's going to follow the same path. Locking the outside there on the curb, which is good that I noticed it, but I only noticed it because there was a very vague sound of tire locking up, but more so I saw it in the tire widget flashing up red. There we go. Telling you that you're locking up the front tires. I'm not sure how they simulate the the battery stuff here in the GDPs because it has a very specific way of working on the real cars. Here it just seems like... I have no modes to adjust, the battery is just draining. Is it recharging? It is. But we're not hearing much of that. We mainly hear the ICE. Tiny bit other noises there in the background. So let's try to see how fast we can go here. Can we just steer more? Yeah. And that's the thing. You always have more front end than you have rear in any situation, really. If you want to go around that corner, just steer more until you lose the rear, pretty much. So understeer is not something that exists, right? You'll always get the rear round. Which is, again, a bit of this shopping trolley feeling that it just seems more muted here than on the GD3. Which is a good thing, but it's still there, you know? Um, and probably you shouldn't go there too much, but it seems like there's going to be a very fine line where you have to tap into that. Insane brakes, I was going to say, and then I missed the corner. But these cars are fast, and it, it comes across, I have to say, especially with the bumpiness of the tracks. You get a good impression of the speed here, so can't complain about this too much. My main thing is going to be the force feedback. I get all the bumps, but I have no information about the grip or the rotation of the car here until it is actually oversteering, and then it's usually too late, right? two more corners and we also have the LED lights of course indicating the lockup I'll show you one more time look left and right off the steering wheel and the more lights the more locking up you are okay we'll leave it at that this is a bit better than the GT3s it still has 
the bit of extra rotation from the shopping trolley feel but it is more responsive again than the tcr um and i think let me see if there's more to show you but for the time being i think this is all the content the game has there's the gd4s honestly i found them dull uh, maybe that's just how gd4s are they are i don't know they're just just too slow without too much character they don't have enough power to get the rear round they are too heavy um to i don't know to actually spark any interest it's all a bit lazy and therefore not so much my thing uh we could do the praga but i think this was one of the worst cards they had so far in the game i did not pay 70 euros for the gg3 uh rent sport which brings me to one more point we have to really do about this game here everything i showed you is free content but um there is a will to collect money and 70 euros like even ea sports is not pulling up 70 euros for fifa every year what are they or for the f1 game unless it's ultimate edition or something and um like this these are these are drastic prices and and what you get is this car you get two further car purchase credits uh you get dynamic livery static livery come on um and badges for 70 euro so it's difficult okay it's difficult you can pay less of course it gives you car purchase credit and a badge it doesn't give you the liveries it doesn't give you the gt3 r rent sport um so i'm a, I'm a bit on the fence here okay i get the free to play and they have to make up with this from people who actually want to pay for this but i think this is really risky because i am not sure the sim racing audience is one that goes for these kind of prices at that's oh by the way i forgot the notch life there okay um but these kind of prices for this amount of content uh for especially for a game in beta for a game that hasn't proven itself for a game that doesn't have an active community um there is so much missing to actually pay 70 euros to justify paying 70 euros that it doesn't seem like the pricing here is made in order to uh, attract people with the content in that somehow uh, 70 euros really is a lot for what there is so you're cross financing the free to play which is a normal model but again we're in in what they call it open beta now and it just feels a bit drastic to me i have to say and um, and then there's more content to come in the future which you'll again probably have to buy one way or another so without the game being fully out you can probably soon be 100 euros into your bank account without the game actually being released and i think we are seeing um that they had quite a bit of investment leading up to this point here so they have developed so the first showing of the game was Maybe we, we talk about this here a little. The first showing of the game was 2022, April or May in, in Munich in the first event among the esports teams. But to this point, they already had to at least put in two, three years of development to get to the stage. So by now, we are probably four or five years into development where they haven't earned anything. So now they have to make up for five years of investment. Um, and it shows in the pricing here, I think. And I'm not entirely sure it's going to work out uh, because the prices are too, too steep. Okay. Um, I would love to give you a, a view of the Nordschleife, but honestly, I do not think that 70 euros are worth it. Do we get the Nordschleife for 40? Yes. But also that I don't think is worth it. We got it for 10 on ACC. Of course, we had to buy the base game there as well. Um, but if you just go to Steam right now, there's going to be offers every now and then of Automobilista, of AC, of AC. Even, even iRacing has uh, offers every now and then for you to get content cheaper. And the more content you have, the higher your discount you get. So I'm not sure this, this pricing model here is putting itself right in the path of the amount you pay for iRacing. And bar the subscription. I get that. But um, it doesn't offer nearly as much. Like, it's not even close. So I think this is a tricky positioning here. Above all the other pay-once titles, so to say, 
and going into the direction of iRacing without offering anywhere near to that. So I think, um, yeah, this, this is something to discuss, of course, is your choice, whether, whether you find it um, play-worthy, buy-worthy or not. Maybe let me know in the comments and we'll call it a day for now. I'll see if I manage a stream the, the other day or, uh, yeah, testing the multiplayer here a bit, but for now, bye.